Welcome to the Sophie Scholl Society. I'm Pastor Mel McGinnis of the Cayenne Congregational Church, where we talk about the two forbidden subjects, politics and religion. And even more forbidding is the mixture of the two, politics and religion. You've heard it said, separation of church and state, but don't let them make you think that that means separation of God and state. Don't let them make you think that it means separating your faith from politics. Your faith informs your politics. Sophie Scholl, that's what she did. Her faith informed her politics. Sophie Scholl with her brother Hans, who so bravely and courageously confronted the Nazis through the White Rose Society. They circulated pamphlets, subversive pamphlets, throughout Germany under the Nazi regime. And in those pamphlets, you can't help but notice not only their faith, not only their politics, but how the two mixed together. Let's take a look at it as an example. Pamphlet number three. The third pamphlet reads this way. Every individual human being has a claim to a useful and just state. A state which secures the freedom of the individual as well as the good of the whole. For according to God's will, man is intended to pursue his natural goal, his earthly happiness in self-reliance, self-chosen activity, freely and independently within the community of life and work of the nation. You know what I thought of when I was reading those words by Sophie and her brother Hans? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. You know that as our Declaration of Independence. You know that that was a subversive document that was inserted into our nation's history, declaring our independence from Great Britain. And those who signed on to that document signed on to their death certificate. Fortunately, for some of them, they were able to survive, but it cost those in the colonies their lives, who gave their lives, their honor, their fortunes for that cause of liberty. Well, that's what Hans and Sophie did. They signed on to their death warrant when they circulated these pamphlets, circulated them throughout Germany, resulting in them being beheaded as they mixed their faith with politics. They went on to write in this document, but our present state is the dictatorship of evil. Oh, we've known that for a long time, I hear you object, and it isn't necessary to bring that to our attention again. But I ask you, if you know that, why do you not bestir yourselves? Why do you allow these men who are in power to rob you step by step? openly and in secret, of one domain of your rights after another, until one day, nothing, nothing at all will be left but a mechanized state system presided over by criminals and drunks. Do you know what Hans and Sophie were saying to the Germans? You're losing your life. You're losing your liberties step by step incrementally. When I read that statement, I thought of James Madison, the father of our Constitution, who warned America about losing rights and liberties gradually 
and incrementally rather than by one abrupt act of violence. Sophie and Hans saw that in Germany the decline of their liberties and rights were occurring right from under the noses of the people. But that subtle way of removing them, as well as other overt ways of suppressing them, were right before their faces. And Hans and Sophie were trying to alert the people that something must be done. And they did it, even though they knew they put themselves at great risk. They asked this question, is your spirit already so crushed by abuse that you forget it is your right, or rather, your moral duty to eliminate this system? Wow, you know what I thought of when I read those words? The following words that were written, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive, when a long train of abuses and usurpations evinces a design to reduce, to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Do you know where that came from? Again, the Declaration of Independence after Thomas Jefferson asserted our inalienable rights of life, liberty, and property, after asserting that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, that when, dis when government is set up in a way that is destructive of those rights, it behooves the people it should create within them a moral sense of duty to throw off such guards and to establish new ones. Sophie and Hans, again, were such a minority, I should say, a vocal minority, because there were plenty of people in Germany who thought like they did, but they would not speak up even in the midst of having people not speak up. Still, Sophie and Hans would, given their faith, given their philosophy on politics, given their call to promote this in an active way, they wrote these words. It is not too late, however, to do away with this most reprehensible of all miscarriages of government so as to avoid being burdened with even greater guilt. Now when in recent years our eyes have been opened, when we know exactly how our adversary is, it is high time to root out this brown horde. Now when they use the word brown there, they're not referring to skin color. I'm sure they are referring to the brown shirts that were indicative of the Nazi government. Up until the outbreak of the war, the larger part of the German people were blinded. How many people are blind today? The Nazis did not show themselves in their true respect, but now that we have recognized them for what they are, it must be the sole and first duty, the holiest duty of every German to destroy these beasts. Can you imagine the gall that Hans and Sophie had to call the Nazis these beasts? But that's what they were. They spoke truth into power. And speaking truth in the power resulted them in losing their life. That was part of the cost. I'm amazed at young people as they were back then, I think 21, 22, 23, 24 years old, writing such intellectual, persuasive pamphlets that 
to me, reflected what we have found in the gentleman's writing of our Declaration of Independence. And should I say, our Constitution as well? Because on pamphlet three, it is subtitled with these words, Salus Publica Suprema Lex, meaning the welfare of the people is the supreme law. Interesting. The state seal of the state of Missouri has these words, Salus Publica Suprema Lex Esto, basically the same words that Sophie and Hans entitled their third pamphlet. The third pamphlet emphasized the welfare of the people, the felicity of the people, the salvation of the people being the supreme law. And isn't that what our own Constitution says? Because when you look at our Constitution, at the preamble it says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure the domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. You see, faith does inform politics. We had founders of our nation whose faith informed their philosophy in putting together a document such as the Declaration of Independence, which was a mission statement. And in that mission statement, later resulted in a blueprint, a blueprint called the Constitution that was for the welfare of the people. No, not these handouts we see welfare taking form today, but the general well-being of the people. Hans and Sophie Scholl understood liberty when they lived in Nazi Germany under extreme suppression and evil, and yet they had a voice bravely and courageously speaking forth the truth. Next week, I hope to have a guest with me, and you may have seen this book, it's called The Big Lie, Exposing the Nazi Roots of the American Left. It's true. What we see today coming from the left is indeed rooted in what we saw in Nazi Germany back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s and it needs to be exposed. And that's what we'll do on the Sophie Scholl Society.